listen to The Front on your smart speaker every morning. To hear the latest episode, just say, play the news from The Australian. From The Australian, here's what's on The Front. I'm Claire Harvey. It's Friday, June 28. Olympic sports will get a half billion dollar windfall from taxpayers in the lead up to Brisbane 2032. This morning's major funding announcement comes just a month before kickoff at the Paris Olympics. You can read that story by John Stenzolt right now at theaustralian.com.au. Police have swooped on bombshell claims in The Australian about the disappearance of Bronwyn Winfield. Unsolved homicide detectives have done a lengthy formal interview with former neighbour Judy Singh, who says she saw Bronwyn's former husband, John Winfield, driving with something that looked like a corpse in the back of his car. John Winfield has denied any wrongdoing. A new episode of Headley Thomas's podcast, Bronwyn, is live now at bronwynpodcast.com. Bruce Lehrman does not have a lot of money, but he's just been slapped with a $2 million legal bill for his failed defamation action against Network 10 and its exiled star, Lisa Wilkinson. 10's had to fork over more than half a million dollars to Wilkinson, and Brittany Higgins' new husband, David Shiraz, has set his sights on federal court justice, Michael Lee. All that's in today's episode. It is common ground that the applicant is a man of modest means. Those are the words of Justice Michael Lee talking about Bruce Lehrman, the man he declared was, on the balance of probabilities, a rapist. Lee tore apart Lehrman's reputation in his judgment, saying the former Liberal staffer was a practised liar so intent upon his own gratification that he had sex with Brittany Higgins without any regard for whether or not she consented. Lehrman is appealing that finding. The judge said although Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson's story about Brittany Higgins was deeply flawed as journalism, he believed Higgins' account of the rape and questioned Lehrman's judgement in bringing the case at all. Having escaped the lion's den, Mr Lehrman made the mistake of coming back for his hat. And now the judge has landed a new blow on Lehrman, declaring he will have to meet some of Tennant Wilkinson's immense legal costs, even if he doesn't appear to be rolling in cash. We've used a voice actor to bring you the words as spoken in the federal court on Thursday. It is not suggested that there is any real likelihood that he'll be in a position to pay a substantial costs order. Lee asked Ten and Wilkinson's lawyers if they could agree on a lump sum amount Lehman should pay and agree to restrict their claim to this amount. Ten agreed, $2 million. Ten told the judge it has spent $3.6 million to date on invoices from their solicitors, but had applied a discount, partly to reflect the fact they didn't have a total win. The judge found their journalism wasn't reasonable. Lehrman quibbled with Ten's figures, including the number of solicitors who worked on the case. A voice actor is reading the words spoken by Lehrman's lawyer, Paul Zvilens, in court. Your Honour might notice that there's three to four, five solicitors who've been engaged, at least three to four full-time in the matter. No explanation is given in the affidavit as to why three to four solicitors have been required to run the matter. Paul Zvilens said when the judge's associate sends an email to the firm representing 10, it's copied to five solicitors. He asked, are they all charging the client to read an email simultaneously? Lehrman's lawyers also raised the fees charged by 10's leading senior counsel, Matt Collins KC, $11,000 per day in court. That's in excess of the Federal Court's National Guide to Counsel Fees, which has a top rate of $7,650 per day. Remember, Sue Crisanthu SC, the counsel for Wilkinson, was charging the comparatively bargain rate of $8,000 per day in court. The judge said he thought Collins's fee was reasonable, especially when compared to lawyers in commercial litigation, such as disputes between two companies. 
The daily rate of Mr Collins is at the top of the range of fees charged by members of the defamation bar, but given his seniority and experience in the area, this is to be expected. The judge said this of Collins' rate. It'd be cheap as chips if it were commercial work at his level of seniority. Network 10 has another bill to pay, a portion of the costs incurred by Lisa Wilkinson on her own legal representation. Remember, Wilkinson is still an employee of Network 10. Lehrman sued 10 and Wilkinson, and although 10 tried to have Wilkinson agree to be represented by their lawyers, Wilkinson strongly believed she needed her own. In fact, well before this matter came to court, she'd engaged one of the country's most famous defamation barristers, Sue Chrysanthu SC, and a different firm of solicitors to the one 10 was using. Why the suspicion? Because when the litigation was looming, Wilkinson's relationship with 10 had completely deteriorated. Wilkinson made a speech at the Logies in which she heralded Brittany Higgins' bravery. And the truth is, this honour belongs to Brittany. It belongs to a 26-year-old woman's unwavering courage. It belongs to a woman who said, enough. That speech caused a furious ACT Chief Justice Lucy McCallum to declare Wilkinson had endangered Bruce Lehrman's right to a fair trial. She was removed from her role at current affairs show The Project. I have decided that it's time to reprioritise a few things in my life. And after almost 15 years of the early alarm of Breakfast TV, and now another five years here at the project desk, I'm looking at how I want the coming years to play out, both professionally and personally. So from tonight, I'm stepping back from hosting the show. And she believed 10 didn't live up to its offer to find exciting new on-air projects for her. The trust was eroded further when 10 tried to persuade Wilkinson, if she was insisting on having her own lawyers, to drop the ones she'd already chosen. That was because 10 had been told their likely star witness, Brittany Higgins, wouldn't cooperate with Chris Hamthu. Here's what Higgins solicitor Leon Zwyer told 10 in an email. It's not his voice. For the avoidance of any misunderstandings, Brittany has instructed me not to assist lawyers and counsel currently retained by Lisa Wilkinson to defend civil claims commenced by Lerman against Lisa Wilkinson. I am not prepared to work with Lisa's current senior counsel under any circumstances. Ten eventually asked Wilkinson to let another senior barrister, Brett Walker SC, to give her advice on whether she needed her own lawyer. Walker told Wilkinson to stick to her guns and to stick with Chris Hanthu. During the trial, this question of costs caused 10 serious damage. Because it was refusing to pay Wilkinson's bills as they were invoiced during the trial, Wilkinson brought a cross-claim against 10, which was heard by Justice Lee. That cross-claim threw up all sorts of stuff 10 didn't want in the public domain, including the fact It had given legal advice to Wilkinson and okayed her Logie speech. Wilkinson was originally seeking more than $1.8 million from 10. 10 offered just under $608,000. In court on Thursday, 10 said it had decided that was too generous and offered to agree on a figure of just under $549,000. The judge and Wilkinson both agreed. That leaves the court to still decide how much of Wilkinson's fees Bruce Lehrman should have to pay. And that's been sent off to an independent referee. Coming up, what Justice Michael Lee's getting up to outside the courtroom. Our subscribers are the first to hear all the updates in this lengthy legal saga. Plus, there's expert analysis, exclusive content and a dedicated app. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au and we'll be back after this break. The defamation action brought by Bruce Lehrman against Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson featured a cast of colourful characters, but none appear to have intrigued Justice Michael Lee more than David Shiraz. Brittany Higgins' new husband was conspicuous by his absence from the lengthy proceedings. He was never called by the prosecution or the defence to give evidence at trial, but his name popped up again and again. 
That's because Shiraz was the driving force behind the project's interview with Brittany Higgins, in which she alleged she'd been raped inside Parliament House in 2019 and that it was covered up by senior members of the coalition government. That claim has been vehemently denied by former ministers and staff. And so I would I would try and raise it and I would try and bring it up and it was always it always sort of came back to sort of being a me issue and if if you can't deal with it then then you can leave. Shiraz pitched the story to Lisa Wilkinson in an email with the subject line Me Too Liberal Party Project Pitch. And so Justice Lee asked counsel repeatedly over the course of the trial if Shiraz would enter the witness box, and if not, why not? The judge said he was like Elijah, always welcome but never showing up. The judge was invoking the Jewish tradition of leaving a cup of wine and a chair at the Passover table for the ancient prophet, who ascended to heaven in a flaming chariot. The idea is that when Elijah returns, it's a sign the Messiah is coming. The motivations of Mr Shiraz in selecting the journalist to tell and use the story were manifest, and rather than this motive being a cause of some degree of circumspection, Mr Llewellyn and Ms Wilkinson indicated their willingness to assist in the political use of the allegations as Ms Higgins and Mr Shiraz intended. That's a snippet of the criticism levelled at David Shiraz by Michael Lee. On August 9, the distinguished judge will sit down with the former ABC chair Ita Buttrose for what's being touted as a candid conversation about the intersection of media, law and society at the national conference of an organisation called Women in Media. Tickets cost almost $500 a pop and David Shiraz has questions about what attendees are signing up for. According to reporting by the Australian's Stephen Rice, Shiraz wrote to the conference organisers demanding to know if the defamation case was on the agenda. They reportedly told Shiraz they didn't expect Lee to discuss the case specifically. But Shiraz wasn't satisfied. A voice actor is reading his response. So he will not discuss the Lehman case, for which he has made his name, and for which you're booking him for? A spokesperson for Women in Media told The Australian what Justice Lee talks about is up to him. We've used a voice actor. The content that Justice Lee chooses to share with attendees is a matter for Justice Lee. While we appreciate people might have their own views about speakers at the conference, programming decisions are a matter for women in media. You can keep up with the latest in the Lehman legal saga at theaustralian.com.au. Thanks for joining us on The Front this week. Our team is Kristen Amiot, Leah Samaclou, Joshua Burton, Jasper Leake, Tiffany Dimack, Matthew Condon and me, Claire Harvey. 